Okay, so coming back over here now, this time I'm going to create one based upon, let's say, the drawing field right over here. So there's drawing, and it tells me it's a unique identifier type row. Every single value is unique inside of it. I can see that because of this little icon right over here. And I'm going to click check. Let it come up. Oh, and make sure first I'm clicked on the white part. There we go. It'll tell you. So you guys can tell how it didn't do anything. So click the white part first. And now check drawing. There we go. And oh, look at that. Look at that over there. So what it just did whoops and what it just did over there was it just came back and actually gave me this drawing part let me move my little mouse over and let me give some space for it right underneath the title bar move it over a little bit bring it down a little bit more all these little cool options bring this to the side a little bit more and there and the last thing I need to do is again make it a slicer so I click in I click in here and then I click on slicer now it's a full-blown slicer and there's a little scroll down you name it so what this says over here now is interestingly enough for every single one of these little drawings over here whatever it represents right however it's linked and because I used a picture over there to be able to define it and then I built it, built it with the formula if I click on one of them, it's going to show me the data just for that drawing. Let's see that in action. Say I click on over here, Lemonade. Now what happened? Interestingly enough, for Lemonade now, we come down, right? And we see, okay, wait a minute. Here's the actual distributor who makes Lemonade, Curbside Universe. Here's the actual category that correlates with Lemonade. That's what you call a dynamic parameter. These are also known as cascading parameters in SSRS, but the mechanism isn't nearly this nice. This is definitely a huge advantage. And you guys can see you can keep on building multiple different slicers based upon what's in the model. So this is why this is beginning to take off or why this is such a popular feature. I say beginning. It's taking off pretty strongly for people who have it. Okay, let's even go further. So this is really neat. So you mean it's that easy now to be able to filter values? Yes. Yes, it is. Awesome. All right. I'm going to come back now and I'm going to clear the filter. So I move my little mouse above it. There we go, and clear, just like that. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change some things up. Uh, for example, I'm going to maybe create cards, okay? So I want to be able to create cards or whatever else. You might be like, what in the world is a card right over there? Okay, let me start up a new visualization first. So just click the blank space just like that to, to get a new one going. And then what I'm going to do over here is this time I'm going to come down, I'm going to, come down to the items table and double click on it. Now watch this. This is really neat. It chooses right off the bat which fields to have, these default fields that were selected inside of the, inside of the um, semantic model or inside of the power pivot model. One, two, three, four, these are our defaults. Apples, you know, you guys can see name, category, color, drawing, and you guys seen the automatic check. I didn't have to check these, I just double clicked. Yep, we have built-in features to be able to help our users be able to consume this data much easier. Okay, now once we've actually got that selected over here, so we got this field, and come back over here. And once we actually got this field selected right over there, let's do something. Let's change it up just a little bit. And for example, let's make it into a card view instead. So coming back over here, or coming up over here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Go into visualizations, come down, come down, and here's card. And what's going to happen is it's going to make every single row look like a card rather than looking like a row. Now, could that be helpful with a small number of rows? Yes, very. Definitely, definitely. If the, if the number of rows were small enough. There's a card, and let me bring this up a little bit. If we're hitting the other table a little bit there. And we can scroll down the card view, and then let me make it a little wider. Come back and adjust it just a little bit more. And look at that. And you guys see how easy it is, how easy it is to move things around for the spacing? And you guys can see over here now, look at that. I can scroll down now through this and see every single one of these sorts of cards over here. So sort of interesting for being able to see various values. And there's their category. There's their color for being able to see data. The cards are nice whenever you want to emphasize very few rows or something like that or very few values. 
they can be extremely helpful just to be able to highlight just those values so that users can see them. So now we've actually seen how to go ahead and do cards, which are very, very interesting. Um, let's go a little bit further. Let's take a little bit further over here. Um, come back over here, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stay on the card, so make sure cards is selected. Just making sure cards is selected by clicking on it. Okay, and now that cards is selected, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come down, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to tile this. So wait till you see how we actually tile containers, and you guys are going to see we're going to make this look like a bunch of tiles essentially. So right now we've got all these big cards and whatever else. Um, find the drawing field, left click to highlight it, and drag it down to where it says tile by right over here. Now where it says tile by over here, drag it in there and drop it. And watch this. What a tile does now is pretty interesting. See this line at the very top? If you start to move it over, you can dynamically see the values. And, when, and, and each value that you choose, you can click on. So rather than have to scroll up or down, you can choose to tile it. So that's what tile is right over there, where you create a tile of the possible values. Very handy whenever you've got images representing things. Very, very handy, definitely. And you guys can see now what's happened is it's going to display each of these values. And you can even move this to the center if you want to. Like that, the little description. So now whenever you tile, people look at something like, okay, boom, these are the top employees, and maybe these are employee sales, this, 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 you name it in here, and they can go through the tile and scroll right through. And maybe they look through employee picture after picture after picture, I don't know, something. Um, very nice. And you guys see that dynamic functionality? Is that not sweet or what? Oh, wow. Okay, I wish this would have been available years ago um, when I started developing reports. It wasn't. But for people who are brand new, they definitely have, um, those of you brand new have a lot more than what I started out with, definitely. Okay, going a little bit further over there. So we've got the tiling happening right now, right? And we've actually gotten to see that part, and this is really neat. Um, what if we wanted to do something, let me move the tile over a little bit, make it a little more friendly. Move the mouse over till I get to the tile, there. And just drag the tile out of the title, probably shouldn't be in there. Move the tile over here or something. There we go. And there, I got the tile. Okay. So now we've all got this along the top of the tile and whatever else. Um, what if we wanted to do something else, though? What if we wanted to take the tile, right, um, and add some things into it? So, for example, what if we wanted to take this tile container, just like this, and add some things in there that are not in the card. So this is considered the card over here. This is considered the tile container right over there, just so everybody can go ahead and see that. Okay, and so I'm gonna click on the tile, and there's this little fields list right over here. Now watch this, this is pretty neat. What if I wanted to be able to actually see something else like month or whatever else? Maybe I wanna be able to see some month data or you name it. Let me show you what it does. I'm gonna come back over here, and under where it says active and all, I'm gonna choose all. Active are the ones I've been using. Um, the one that I cho chose to create it with initially. And I'm going to bring in the month right off the bat. So I want the name of the month like January, February, March. Okay, check. And in fields, it's got month name right over there. And look at that. There's month name over there. Now let's go a little bit further over here just to see some more. Um, we start up this new table right over here, right? And then what I'm going to do right over here is I'm going to take this name field right over there. And then, and then after I finish selecting that, what I'm going to do over here, or just make sure that the name field selected, I'm going to bring down the quantities, um, the sum of the quantity served. Renders the data for me automatically on demand. Notice how the data renders right then and there. Very helpful. I'm going to move this over a little bit. And now I've got the month right over here, and I've got the sum, um, sum of the quantity served. And I'm going to change this up to a line chart. So I'm going to click over here, make sure I'm back on this thing over here. And I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to change its visualization to a line. So I've got the card already. Now I'm going to add a line chart. Oh, and look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Let me just move this to the right a little bit more. Come back over here. 